Hi, I'm Johnny from ultimatepapermache.com and this is lesson number three in how to make a paper mache cat. If you missed lesson number one and two, you can find them out on my blog, ultimatepapermache.com or on my YouTube channel at ultimatepapermache. Um, today we're going to add um, some crumpled paper to this armature to make it a little bit less flat. We're going to round it out so that it actually has the shape of the cat and what I'm not going to do today, just because it, it takes a little bit more concentration, is we're not going to do the face or the toes quite yet. We're just going to do the basic shapes of the back and the outsides of the legs. And that will give us a really good start. And then in lesson number four, we'll go into the details to get that face and the toes just, just right. And what we're going to need is some newspaper and some masking tape. I like to use... Um, these roll of paper. I get it up at the newspaper office. I think they charge me two or three dollars for these. And um, I don't know how much paper's got on it, but it's a lot. And then you get this really cool cardboard roll too. I haven't quite figured out what to do with them, but they make nice elephant lace or something. Um, the reason that I like these is because newspapers always come with all these ads and things. And the heavier a stiffer paper that has all the colored printing on it. it doesn't really fold up very well. It doesn't, you know, they, they can be kind of loud, but you end up with things poking out that are really hard to squish down and make smooth. This isn't exactly smooth either, but it works a lot better than the heavier paper. So by getting the rolls, I don't have to, um, I don't have to have little piles of advertisements that I have to end up throwing away. Then I just read the newspaper online. So, what we want to start with is the portions of the body underneath the leg parts. This will actually help uh, make those legs really well uh, protected as well. Having, having the paper behind it really helps. And the one thing to remember on all of this, whether you're doing legs or, or body pieces, you never go beyond, like this, this one is, uh, this one is padding out the body. You never put anything higher than this piece of cardboard that we cut out for the armature. Because otherwise, if, if we do, if we, if we have paper coming up here, then there'd be absolutely no point in having gone to all the trouble of cutting out our pattern. This sets the, the shape of the uh, highest point on the cat. And so we want to make sure that we never go beyond it. You want to um, make your pieces of paper as tightly scrunched together as you can. Because the, um, if you have it really loose, you know, like if you made it really loose like this and then taped it over, when you go to put on your paper mache, whether it's the strips or the paper mache clay, you're going to have all this squishiness. It's not going to have something solid that you can work with. So make it as tight as you can. You'll need a lot of uh, tape. So just uh, buy the cheapest tape you can find and use lots. It really helps to make your sculpture really solid and, and uh, well formed. I'm going to put this down here on the leg. Again, not, not going out over the leg piece because you want that, um, that shape that you've already created in your cardboard to stay there. But you just want to put paper on the inside of that leg and not making the tummy fatter. I hope that made sense. And so now we can go ahead and finish up the body right here in the back portion where her tail will eventually end up. Now I'm going to go ahead, since I've already got the uh, paper under the legs, now I'm going to go ahead and fill up all of these spaces here and partially, just a little bit of the neck. We'll do the rest of the head later. And then I'll come back and we'll do the um, outside so that we can shape the um, the knee and the shoulders. Okay, I've got 
um, all of the padding on the inside, and I put padding on the inside of the legs as well. The one thing that I'm able to get really sloppy about, because uh, basically because my cat um, covers up almost all of her muscles and bones with hair, so I don't really have to worry very much about getting things um, perfectly uh, formed with in this part of the process because I'm just going to be covering it up. Um, but there is one part that you'll need to be really careful of if you have a short haired cat that you're doing. And that's why I got this old gray mare out to show you. Um, it's being kind of personal here, but um, I don't, do we call it a crotch or I don't know what we're going to call it, but the, the legs come together at the back. And they also splay out or in slightly so that when, when, a, when most animals are standing, the, um, if we're thinking about those foam pieces that we put inside of the armature, um, I, I used flat ones because again, I knew that my cat was gonna be all covered up with hair, so it didn't really matter exactly where those legs were. But with most animals, it's going to be at an angle, a slight angle this way. So look at your cat really carefully, go over photographs, um, turn her over and rub her belly if you have to, and really find out how those pieces come together here at the back where the legs and the buttocks come together. Because it's kind of an important feature. Um, it won't look realistic at all if you don't get those pretty close. I don't have to worry about it, so I'm not going to. <laughs> so I guess I'm cheating. Um, now the other part point is that at this point, now that we have all of the um, all of the places underneath the legs and the body filled out up to the height of the legs, the ar armature is really not going to help us very much anymore. It's done as much help as it's going to because now we have to need to pad out beyond that space and we need to look at as many reference photos as we can possibly find to get those shapes right. Um, I took several photographs of my cat uh, sitting down. Um, those are going to help me get the uh, basic shapes of the fur, the outside fur that I'm going to be working on. Now one thing that I do know because of looking at those photographs is that the back legs do go out sideways. So I'm just going to bend them a bit just to make it a little bit easier so our paws are in the right place. And the front legs are going to need to come in almost so that the, the, so the feet are touching and I'm going to have to take care of those. Um, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get it to stay that way. Probably just enough tape and, and paper padding will, will do it for me. Now usually I would just bring those photographs out here to the studio, but my printer's not working, so I just uh, made some uh, quick drawings here, just with the basic shapes. So I'm going to go ahead and p finish padding this out. You don't need to actually watch me do that. I'll, I'll do it while you're not uh, looking because every single cat is going to be different. How you pad the outside beyond the armature depends on the photographs and the model that you have to work with. So don't, don't just follow this one. Uh, go look at your reference photos and, and try to pad those out so that they actually match the cat that you're working with. Once I started actually working on uh, padding out the rest of the cat, I discovered that I was spending more time taking things apart, throwing paper and masking tape on the floor and, and doing it again, than I was actually, uh, I just wasn't getting anywhere because every time I would look from a different angle, I wasn't, it just wasn't right, it wasn't working. So I went back and made myself a little clay maquette um, just so well, she lost her ear already, but that's okay. It's not even in the right proportions, but it was just something that I could use uh, to find all the major shapes and forms on this big long-haired cat, um, so that I so that I would have something solid to look at instead of trying to flip through all the photographs. Uh, my cat. Fortunately, uh, was willing to model for me for, for just a little while. She actually sat on this table, and um, so I put this little clay model together. It's an awful lot easier to move things around in clay than it is uh, taping things on and then having to rip them off like I was doing. I had a whole floor full of paper and masking tape. So this this came out a lot better. Of course, I still don't have the head uh, or the ears or the toes on the front feet. 
But everything else, well, that and the tail, are pretty much ready to go. Um, when I really analyzed it carefully, I could see that there's a stripe that goes all the way from the shoulders all the way down uh, to the front foot that has shorter hair. And so this part does not stick out very much. And the, um, the shoulders are really narrow on a cap. So very little padding was put on over the, uh, the shoulder uh, patterns. Very small amount. In fact, I may actually have to remove some of this. Then the ruff, which uh, is still needing a little bit of work, but I'll do that probably when I add the clay. Uh, the, the ruff goes around here. That, that portion I thought I would add later, but it was too confusing to leave it off, so I went ahead and did it now. Then this area slopes upward this way from the shoulder area. There's a bit of a bump right here uh, that covers the... Um, the back knee area. There's a very strong slope back to the tail starting at this point here. So there's a, a V-shaped from the, from the uh, top goes back to the tail and then there's this tuft of hair here which covers the, um, the area where the leg bends. I think that's their heel. I'm not sure that's what it's called. Now when you look at it from a different angle, which I was doing, um, just a little bit too late, I realized that I'm actually missing some fur right here. Maybe it's easier to see from this side. So it's really important not only to look at your photographs from a whole lot of different angles and follow your cat around and look at her, but then when you get something, get the, the padding added to your cat, uh, then you need to look at it from all angles too, and that's that's something that I'm going to have to go back and uh, fill in because I just didn't put on quite enough. It isn't uh, it isn't symmetrical. Now, if your cat is uh, twisted or moving, which you can do easily simply by bending that uh, the the pattern piece that basically represents your backbone. So you can twist that at almost any place on a cat because they're so supple. So if you wanted to have her twisted and turned around and her head going in a different direction, you can just do that before you start adding any paper. So that's it for today. I hope you have fun uh, filling out your cat and uh, giving him his muscles and his shape. Um, I'll be back in a couple of days for the uh, toes and the face. And um, I'll have all of this posted on my blog, ultimatepapermache.com, so if you have any questions at all, um, please be sure and come on over, ask. Um, I'm more than happy to help. If you'd like to show us uh, how you're doing, um, some people have already put up their patterns. Um, I'm hoping to see you know, your progress as you go along because I think that uh, makes it a lot more fun for me. So um, please uh, feel free to come visit, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.